Hi everyone, Megan here from Beguiled by Books, and today I'm going to go through my latest book haul from my favorite bookstore, Blackbird Books and Coffee in Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's get into it. Okay, so Blackbird Books and Coffee is the uh, newest bookstore to the Triangle, North Carolina area. They are in downtown Raleigh at the City Market area. And I have been going there since they opened, which was around mid-July. And I love them. They're absolutely fabulous. Um, adorable bookstore, amazing coffee. Just really enjoy everything about the store. It's become a bit of a ritual to go there at least once, if not maybe a couple times every weekend. Um, so today I want to go through and just share with you some of the awesome books that I have found and discovered uh, at Blackbird Books and Coffee. So let's let's talk about it. So first up, I have a towering stack of books next to me, but I have Legendborn and Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. I have been eyeballing these books for a little while, and I'm super excited to get to read them really soon. Um, again, they've been on my list. I am looking forward to reading them. I honestly don't know the premise of them, but just super excited to see what they're about. Next, I have Our Wives Under the Sea. This is a really interesting book. Uh, my husband actually saw it while we were in the bookstore. It's a short little, you know, just a quick novel. Um, it was rated as a best book of the year by NPR. So I was excited to see that blurb on the back. And it's about um, let's see, a marine biologist who left for a routine expedition when her submarine sank to the seafloor. And when she finally surfaces and come back home, her wife knows that something is off with her. So really interested to see what happens in this. Again, this looks like a great little weekend read when it's storming outside. So we'll see what happens. The next book I found at Blackbird is The Water Outlaws. This looked um, really interesting to me. I saw it. I didn't buy it. Uh, all the copies got sold. I came back a few weeks later and I saw a copy. So I grabbed it because I had not stopped thinking about it. But this is, um, this. the blurb on this is inspired by a classic of martial arts literature the Water Outlaws are bandits of devastating ruthlessness, unseemly femininity, dangerous philosophies, and ungovernable gender who are ready to make history or tear it apart. There are blurbs here from uh, Patrick Rothfuss and Shelley Parker Chan, which I was really excited about. So can't wait to check this one out. Next, I have a very unexpected one called Bridge by Lauren Bukes. Uh, this is in the sci-fi section, which is not something I tend to read, but I was really excited. It seems very um, interesting in the sense of time travel, original reality bending kind of storyline. Um, so I figured why not? So I bought it because I have a problem and that's okay. But we'll see what Bridge is all about soon. One of the first books I bought at Blackbird is Aspects by John M. Ford. Uh, full disclosure, I judge books by the cover all the time. So this one caught my eye. I was quite curious. Um, I saw there was an introduction by Neil Gaiman, who I really enjoy his writing. And there, it just seems really interesting fantasy, um, diverse cast, according to the blurbs on the back. Um, but yeah, don't know what it's about, but I'm excited to check out Aspects. My In my stack of books here, my only nonfiction is The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. So I grabbed this book. I'd heard about it. Um, I know Ryan Holiday had Rick Rubin on his podcast not that long ago. So I saw that and was really interested in the book as someone who creates things and enjoys the creative process. I'm always looking for ways of learning how others think, learning tips and tricks on improving myself. So we'll see what the creative act is all about. Next, I have mentioned this in my books I want to read in October. I've got God Killer by Hannah Kainer. Um, it's not a big beastly book, so I'm excited to be able to get into this and read this uh, pretty quickly. But yeah, looking forward to it. Again, another fantasy book and we'll see what happens. I also have Witch of Wild Things, another book I wanted to read uh, in October, and this looks like something very 
In the Shadow Garden by Liz Parker with more witchy things. So looking forward to reading, reading this. This feels like a nice cozy novel. I hope it uh, is, I hope it proves to be a cozy novel. And um, again, something I can probably blow through over a, a day or a weekend uh, curled up by the fireplace as it gets colder. Another book I got is called Siren Queen. And this was recommended by one of the owners of Blackbird. And I probably would never have picked it up had it not been recommended. But it's a little bit of magical realism in the 1920s with a Chinese American main character. Uh, so looking forward to seeing this. There's, you know, supposedly monsters and old Hollywood. So that sounds pretty interesting. The other book I got from Blackbird in that same book haul where I think I got four or six books, again, I have problems. It's okay. Uh, is The Collected Regrets of Clover. Again, probably wouldn't have picked this book up naturally. It, um, it's not typically what I read, but that's okay. We, we should all branch out in our genres. But this is about a death doula, which that concept was first introduced to me when I watched the show, I think it's called Limitless with Chris Hemsworth on Disney+. Plus. And just like a birth doula brings life into the world, a death doula is someone who helps guide you to the next phase um, in your transition out of life into death. Um, so I was really curious about this. I think death is a really interesting topic. We can save that for a conversation another day. But yeah, the collected regrets of Clover. Excited to get into that. Don't worry, there are more. More books that I've gotten from Blackbird Books and Coffees. Mortal Follies. I saw this. This was a really super fun cover. And when I looked at it and I read the blurb, I said, this looks like Bridgerton meets witchcraft. And I'm all about that. So Mortal Follies, hopefully that's a good, uh, a good little novel to read. I also picked up a book called The Glass Magician. Um, it takes place in New York in 1905. The Vanderbilts, the Astors, the Morgans, those high society types from the early 20th century. Uh, I'm quite curious about the Vanderbilt family specifically. I live east of the Biltmore Estate, which is an Asheville NC, and really love visiting the Biltmore Estate and learning about the Vanderbilt history. So when I saw this, I said, you know what, why not? Let's, let's see what a little magical realism around that time period looks like. So We'll see what The Glass Magician is all about. Another sci-fi book I've just picked up is called Rabbits by Terry Miles. And apparently this is about an alternate reality game, but the game started in 1959 and there are winners that have been declared of this game, but then something changes and one of the winners is declared missing, which is the catalyst for what comes next. So very interested in hearing what this is or reading what this is about. Um, one of the owners of Blackbird said that her partner was reading this and uh, really, really enjoyed it. So again, recommendation. We'll see what Rabbits is all about. Apparently there's also a podcast and for what it's worth, Norman Reedus did a blurb from The Walking Dead. So really intriguing here on Rabbits. Next up, I have The House Witch, which is a very hefty tome here in my hand. Uh, it's, a, it's a larger, taller kind of book. It's not shy on the thickness. And this is something that one of the owners, Brie of Black Bear Books and Coffee, adores. And she's absolutely recommending it to everyone. I love all things witchy and fun. This fits the bill. So I'm going to read The House Witch and tell you how I liked it. All right, we're down to our final three. So the last three books that I have for us is The Magician's Daughter. Uh, this was a book I don't even, it was kind of hidden behind me where I was standing. I, it was fate that brought it to, to me. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's about an island off the coast of Ireland with ancient trees, sea salt air, ruins and fairy lore. And what happens when forces try to overcome this hidden magical island is all about, um, or that's the premise of The Magician's Daughter with some blurbs from Alex Harrow, who I really enjoy her writing, as well as Andrea Stewart, um, who wrote the Bone Shard trilogy. Uh, I think it's got a better name than that, but I call it the Bone Shard trilogy. So yeah, excited to read The uh, Magician's Daughter.
Next, I've got The Witches of Bone Hill. Um, I saw this. I saw Witch in the title. You can see a theme here in the autumn months. I'm reading and picking up a lot of witchy books. Um, but this one is family secrets and witchcraft and trying to escape your past, but you're not able to. That's, I think that's what the book is really about. So excited to see how this goes. Okay, last book before my piles fall over over here, I have The Hurricane Wars. I had not heard of this book when I purchased it. And since I got The Hurricane Wars, I've seen it all over my social media as a, like a hot new book to read for fantasy. I'm really interested in what this is about. It has a lot of great blurbs on the back uh, from authors I like and respect. Um, great map on the inside. So really looking forward to seeing what that's about. And it specifically says, um, a spellbinding debut fantasy romance set in Southeast Asia inspired an inspired world ravaged by storms, perfect for fans of Sarah J. Mass and R.F. Kuang. So I love both of them as authors. Anything that is even remotely like them, I'm probably going to read to form an opinion. So we'll see what the Hurricane Wars is all about. Thank you for sticking with me through all of my books that I have purchased at my favorite bookstore, Blackbird Books and Coffee in Raleigh, North Carolina. If you are in the area, please go see my friends. They are absolutely wonderful. Grab a cup of coffee. Um, again, you will not be disappointed. It's an adorable little shop and surrounded by lots of other great local businesses in downtown Raleigh. I'm not paid to say this. I just love that area so much. And if you like this video, please give me a like. I would appreciate a subscribe to the channel. Please drop a comment if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of the books I talked about today, or if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Have a great day.